Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make this sound. So as you can hear, some kind of riser sweep. And we're going to make it out of a snare sample, like this. So that's going to be our sample for today. In order to do this kind of effect, we need to find reverbs that has a freeze function. Um, this, will, this basically means that it's going to freeze the tail. At, the, at any given moment where you press the freeze button. Um, so the example that you heard here was made with Raum, which is a very nice creative reverb from Native Instruments. And the parameters you want to look for is a freeze button and also the size, which I think corresponds to the room size. Um, so let's get right to it. <clears throat> Let's go in here and then make a go from a large room to a small room. It's going to give the effect that I showed you just before. You can make like a curve, something like this maybe. And then you want to automate the freeze as well. And you want to activate it right after the initial hit. So in this case, it's going to be after the MIDI note. Otherwise, it's not going to, it's not going to capture anything. So it's just going to be complete silence. Um, so yeah, let's uh, record. And we stop right there. You could also draw an automation like this. And it's going to stop uh, immediately at that point. Anyway. So there we have our little reverb sweep slash riser slash whatever you want to call it. And of course, you don't need external plugins for this. Um, if you're using Ableton, you can use the built-in reverb right here. Not sure how it is with Ableton 11. Maybe you can. Tr I think. I think the new hybrid reverb, which mixes convolution reverb and the original algorithmic reverb, also may may or may not have a freeze uh, parameter as well. But um, to be honest, I don't really know. I haven't played around with it that much. Uh, so we can get something similar out of this one as well. Except for here, the freeze button is right there. And then you have the size parameter. So let's go in here and do the same thing. Let's make a 16 one. 16 bar long. Reverb. Riser. Thing imaging. Um, then the free size, where is it? Freeze on, here we go. Freeze off, that's correct. Jesus, fuck. Control shift and scroll, you scroll sideways. Nice. And let's record that one as well. That was a fail.
nice. So now we got our risers over here. Weird that it's not changing. It can get really creative with the source material that you just got for yourself doing this technique. Um, it's a little bit, a little bit different than just using a standard bandpass noise or high pass noise or whatever you want to call it. It gives another type of texture to it, and um, as people like to say that it, it's good, it's, it's good to do some resampling of stuff that you already made in order to make new sounds because. It's going to get a feeling that it kind of makes sense because everything belongs together, you know. Um, I mean, the snare that I used as my source sound is the snare that I use in the track. And I turn that into a riser or sweep or whatever you want to call it. So using this technique. And then you can further manipulate this. You can use the Ableton's built-in um, warping modes. You can put a gatekeeper on it. You can... Um, put a flanger on it, you can throw it into a sampler again and do some other stuff. Um, I mean, the possibilities are endless, but sometimes you need to be decisive and, and um, stick to a method in order to, to progress in your track as well. So, I mean, it's up to your imagination in the end what you're going to do with, uh, with the sounds that you make. So, yeah, that was all. Thanks for watching, guys.